Checking back in at Universal Epic Universe, the new theme park opening in Orlando in 2025, we're getting our first look at the coaster train for Starfall Racers. This celestial-themed racing coaster will feature two tracks, the highest speeds in the park, and an impressive lighting package to make it look like shooting stars streaking across the sky. Let's dig into more about this launched dueling coaster, as well as check in on construction around the park in today's news update. Located within Celestial Park, the central area of Epic Universe, Starfall Racers is the park's largest roller coaster attraction, manufactured by Mock Rides. Reaching speeds up to 62 miles per hour and heights up to 133 feet along 5,000 feet of track, this dual track roller coaster will have two trains racing side by side for most of their circuits. The signature move for the ride is named the Celestial Spin. This inverted crisscross will have both trains barrel roll around each other at the tallest point of the ride, seen here. Thanks to the incredible aerial and on-the-ground photography from BioReconstruct on social media, we are getting our first look at one of the complete trains for Starfall Racers. This train is seen parked here on the final brake run. As we reported previously and based on permit information, the trains do appear to have 20 seats total. Keeping in mind that when they dispatch, there will be two trains launching at the same time, which means 40 riders will start the ride at once. The cone of this comet-shaped coaster train, as well as all of the white spots seen in the photos, are likely LED lights. Universal has said that this ride will not feature any external track lighting at night, so the fully illuminated ride vehicles will appear as comets shooting across the night sky above Celestial Park. It has been rumored that the coaster will feature onboard audio, which seems to have been confirmed on the official website where it says the ride will feature ethereal music. The ride will likely feature an original score similar to the score expected for Celestial Park itself. The composer for Celestial Park has not yet been announced, but it is rumored to contain all new music created just for the park. As hinted at in the official blog from Universal, there is going to be an Easter egg on the back of each train. We believe this will be a flux capacitor from Back to the Future. Looking very closely at the recent photos, this box on the back of the train may be a flux capacitor Easter egg. It appears to be covered in a blue protective film for now, but does match the shape of the flux capacitor seen in the films. Scaffolding has come down around the large comet icon at the front of Starfall Racers. Just like the official concept art, this shiny Art Deco style comet icon is being covered in silver and bronze colors. According to permit information, the tail of this comet icon reaches all the way into the coaster station area. Foundation prep work continues on the extended exterior queue for this ride, seen at number 3 in this photo. Hookups can be seen poking out of the ground where these extended queue areas will be built. And a small block wall can be seen rising closer to the tracks behind this area. Elsewhere in Celestial Park, Epic Universe's central hub, one of the shallow basins in front of the Atlantic restaurant, has seen its entire bottom get the light blue finish color. We saw the walls of these two basins get this light blue last week. Near here, many of the cascading waterfalls at the park's entry area have already received pouring, creating a network of small rivers that will appear to feed into the park's central water features. Just outside of the park's main entrance, a small forest of new trees have appeared. Quickly checking in around the other worlds of Epic Universe, Super Nintendo World has seen most of the colorful Yoshi ride vehicles uncovered. Amidst the colorful two-seater Yoshi ride vehicles, we can also get our first good look at the egg-shaped accessibility vehicle. This vehicle features a Yoshi figure riding in the front of the egg. Looking closer along the Yoshi ride path, it appears as though the base for this conch door character has been installed. Still missing its head, this bird character will peck up and down towards the ride vehicles as they pass. The Donkey Kong Minecart Madness roller coaster has reportedly been testing in recent weeks. One of the minecart-shaped ride vehicles can be spotted here, ready to dispatch. 
The barrel for this ride's launch at the top of the Golden Temple is now visible on site. Once installed, minecarts will appear to be shot out of this barrel launch at the start of the ride. Here is an updated look at the palm tree shapes on the colorful temple wall on the left side of the attraction. Scaffolding has come down around the Golden Temple section of this wall on the right side, revealing a nearly fully painted section. Here is a closer look at some of these large golden bricks as seen from the ground. At the front of Dark Universe, the land featuring Universal Monsters, a large circular shape has appeared in front of the portal for the land's entry courtyard. Heading into the land, at the end of the village street, another round courtyard is taking shape. This one is for the entry into the land's main ride, expected to be named Monsters Unchained, The Frankenstein Experiment. A completed brick wall can be seen lining the right side of this round courtyard, which features a cutout center. This center area may be for a planter, fountain, or maybe an attraction marquee. Looking at the ride's large manor facade, most of the scaffolding has come down around the front. Looking closer, we can see multiple vines climbing up the front of this spooky manor. These vines match the motif seen on the land's entry portal. The other attraction for this land, a spinning roller coaster expected to be named Curse of the Werewolf, has seen what may be permanent nets installed over the pathways. These black nets are only located under the track in the parts that pass over guest areas. At the very back of the land, new scaffolding has gone up in front of the windmill-themed dining location. Perhaps this is for the installation of the windmill's burning blades. Looking into How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, it appears that foundation work related to the main entrance to the land's roller coaster ride is starting now. The footprint for what may be Hiccup's house can be seen on the ground, which is rumored to act as the entrance to this roller coaster, expected to be named Hiccup's Wing Gliders. The ride's exit gift shop is already built, seen to the left of this area in this photo. Looking closer at the coaster's first of two launches, we can see additional mechanical gears related to the story for this ride, which has it built by Hiccup himself. Work has been progressing quickly on the grandstands behind the two Skyfly spinner rides. The roller coaster will pass through this structure, creating a head chopper element for the ride. We're getting our best look yet at the small house at the very top of the large mountain above the Mead Hall dining location. One of the boats for the interactive boat ride can be seen here, ready to launch using the maintenance access canal that connects to the ride's lagoon. At the front of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic, we can see that scaffolding has come down around the perfume ad-themed mural outside of the land. At the back of the park, the Universal Helios Grand Hotel continues to be enclosed, with some exterior panels seen missing on this side that's facing Dark Universe. The rooftop bar is receiving framing around its exterior walls. It is expected to feature large floor-to-ceiling windows to offer grand views of the park on this side and the fireworks show on the other side. To the right of the rooftop bar, this taller section is listed in permits as a ballroom. Across the street, ground views of the Universal Terra Luna and Stella Nova resorts give us an idea of just how vibrant and colorful the reflective tiles appear in person. Most of Stella Nova is now covered in tiles. The section that is not yet complete, facing the theme park, just started recently. Terra Luna still has a ways to catch up, but is making good progress, with this section on the right half of the side facing Universal Boulevard nearly complete. Here is a view of the same tiles, but as seen from a different angle, to show you how the reflective tiles can appear as different hues depending on your view. The main flyover traffic ramp leading to Epic Universe, located on this end of the extended Kirkman Road, is making good progress. This raised traffic circle will be the main way to get to and from Epic Universe, and we can see the first road supports being constructed now. 
That's going to wrap it up for this update, but a huge thank you to BioReconstruct for the amazing aerial photographs. You can follow him on social media for more theme park photos. Be sure to leave a like on this video and comment if you're enjoying our coverage of the new park. And make sure you're subscribed to never miss an update. For even more information, as well as behind the scenes posts, your name in the credits, and more, consider joining our Patreon to support what we do. Patreon.com slash theme park stop. Thanks for watching. See you next time.